Mommy, I'm a leader. Look now, what's my now? Move your mic now. You guys, Hold your mouth. I'm 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 Yeah, <laughs> 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 As you can see, the lecturer is hand. The lecturer is hand already. You can't just guide the notes on my Please oh, compose yourself now. Where we have this. Compose yourself now. Stop making noise. We are not your father's house. Stop Good. Good. What kind of um what kind of problem is this? I can see that. Are you know, imagine? Trying to play with you Matric number has been put down. Eh, has been put down. I want to share my did my distance. You can. Samuel, I don't know you like that. trying to make them stop I'm going to go to the 
name has been taken okay. uh, James Unduka. Why now? Oh, you are in trouble. You are in trouble. Ajibo, she sits very well. She will sit. The, the, the Premier right. Department of Chemistry. Yes, yes, yes. Why don't you ask? Twenty 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 one academic session. <laughs> we tell everybody that. Yeah, yeah, welcome to the Your Premier University. Guys, we never do the class. We are already, we are already raising up your hands. What do you want to ask already? First ask line. <laughs> 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 And the premier department premier. of chemistry. Premier department of chemistry. Okay, I put your leg down now. Who are those animals? Who are those animals? Why can't you compose yourself? I like it. I like it. So I meet all of us. Meet everybody. 12 minutes after 9. And the time can be restored. Let's start the class. Oh, let's start the class. No, this is oh, the money. Oh, my God. 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 Can you hear me? We can hear you, sir. Please try to mute all of us, sir. If you can hear me, then I can mute. We can hear you. Mute everybody. Okay. Yes, they can. They can be many accounts for the first so good morning. I do hope you are hearing me. Well, um, you have started the class. I know Professor Obiegbedi has taught you. Um, Dr. Ojo has also taught you. And um, I think Dr. Inena has also taught you. So you are welcome to the Premier University and the, a premier department in the same university for the 2000, for the 2020-2021 academic session. Um, this is chemistry 156. And um, the course outline, which I know you are familiar with, if you must have been told before, you have um, atoms and molecules, Dr. Latinde will come and take you that. Acid bases and salt. Sorry, Dr. Ojo is taking you this. 
if not Professor Adili K any longer, Tamu Chemistry, Dr. Adi Jora will be taking you that. Oxidation and reduction, Professor Babala will be taking it. So I'm the one taking this now. And then the last one is rate of reactions. Um, that will be that has been taken by Professor Obiek Bedi. Okay, then kinetic theory of gases already taken by Dr. Dorsey. So um you are welcome. I think I need to be a bit fast. I've taken quite a number of time. That I've taken some time. So I'll be taking your suggestion and reduction as well as um, electrochemistry. Um, you are familiar with oxidation and reduction. I'm aware you have done it at secondary school level. And normally when you define oxidation and reduction at secondary school level, you either define in terms of oxygen or you define it in terms of hydrogen or you can define it in terms of oxidation and reduction and then um, in terms of oxidation number. So you have these three methods. But you see the problem we normally have is that some of these definitions are restrictive. For instance, if you have oxidation and reduction and you don't have oxygen in the chemical reaction, then that would be a problem. You can define in terms of oxidation, in terms of oxygen. Um, if you have, if you don't have hydrogen, that means you can define in terms of hydrogen. But you always have change in oxidation number. And that one is much more useful than the other. So I'm sure you are familiar with this, that oxidation, when you define the, you want to define the oxidation and reduction in terms of oxygen, um, oxidation will be the addition of oxygen to a substance. And the common one is when you have your ion, your nail, and you have oxygen from uh, you have oxygen from atmosphere and it becomes a rust. That is a common example, and this is a typical equation of that. You have your ion, you have your oxygen, and that gives you ion rust. That is oxidation. You can also have, and this is an example, this is a typical oxidation. And then you can also have this. If you have this, you have ion inside the copper sulfate, you have ion inside the um, ion, you have, um, you have this now becoming ion sulfate. So that means oxidation has actually taken place here. And um, you can also define, uh, you can also use, you can define oxidation and reduction in terms of um, oxygen as well. Reduction is going to be removal. Oxidation is addition, then reduction is removal of hydrogen. An example is when you have this, you can have your iron ore, that is Fe2O3. If you add CO2 to it, uh, CO2 to it, carbon monoxide, then you can have iron. Now you have carbon dioxide at the other hand. So the red arrow here is showing reduction, while the blue one shows what you have there is oxidation. So in most cases, you have oxidation and reduction going hand in hand. And that is why you often talk about the two of them, oxidation and reduction. And then um, the other definition we have is in terms of oxygen. So when you talk about oxidation, in terms of hydrogen rather, when you talk about oxidation, that means it is removal of hydrogen. This is opposite the first one. Removal of hydrogen from a compound. So when you remove hydrogen from this compound, now um, you are removing from this uh, methanol to have, uh, from this ethanol to have ethanol. Then what you have is loss of hydrogen and that is reduction. Um, you can also have reduction defined as addition of hydrogen. You know, reduction and uh, oxidation is removal of hydrogen. So reduction is addition of hydrogen. I'm sure you are familiar with this um, at secondary school level. And this is, for instance, you have CuO, uh, CuO, copper oxide plus hydrogen to give you copper and hydrogen and water. That is, um, that will be an example of um, reduction. And the same thing goes for your chlorine plus hydrogen to give ACL, that is also reduction. So these are common examples that you can have. Um, the definition, you can only use them when you have oxygen and um, hydrogen. 
So now in terms of oxygen number, if you look at this reaction for a sample, if you have metallic copper, uh, metallic zinc, if you put it inside zinc um, sulfate, at the end you are going to have zinc sulfate. And um, that means at the end you are going to have a brownish copper deposited. What you have is that oxidation and reduction must have taken place when you have this reaction. And the reactions are normally in two, in, uh, normally divided into two. You are, they are called half reactions. So you have the oxidation half reaction, and then you have the reduction half reactions. So you can always have what we call oxidation half reaction and reduction half reaction. So if you have that um, example that I've just mentioned, oxidation is increased in oxidation number. Oxidation is increased in oxidation number. And for oxidation number to increase, that means you must have, have you must have had loss of electron. So the loss of electron is oxidation. Increase in oxidation number is oxidation. And then reduction, on the other hand, is decrease in oxidation number. That means gaining of electron. When you gain electron, that means you have reduction in oxidation number, and that is reduction. So this is the definition that we'll be dealing with for a greater part of this class. The other one is the elementary one, which I've been taught is at secondary school level. And then this other one is what we'll be dealing with for most of the time um, during these um, lectures. So now look at this reaction. We, we have sink becoming sink two plus, plus two electrons. I hope you can see that. Sink two plus, plus two electrons. And then the reduction reaction, if you have copper, two plus, plus two electrons. See, this one is having, you are adding electron now. So addition of electron reduction reaction to give copper. The first one is oxidation because it loses. Loss of electron is oxidation. And you see it's increased in oxidation number. Sink increase from zero to two plus. And for the reduction reaction, copper decrease from two plus to zero. So, and then um, now you can find your overall reaction. Overall reaction simply means you add the two together. So when you add the two together, you see you have two electrons on, on both sides. And that means the two electrons will cancel one another. And then your next reaction is going to be what you have here. So that is your net reaction. And um, so you can see here now, oxidation number of zinc increased from zero to two plus, and that is loss of two electrons. And oxidation number of copper decreased from two plus to zero. And that is gain of two electrons. So when we have this, we, that we normally use to describe it, we call it oil rig. Oxidation is loss. Reduction is gain. Is that okay? So if you look at the red arrow, so what you have is reduction for copper and for magnesium, you have increase. So you have increase in oxidation number. So now, if you look at it, the number of electrons that must have been gained for a uh, number of electrons that must have been gained for copper to have this will be two. And then for this, we must have lost two electrons to have magnesium two plus. Um, so this is very, very important. This is the general rule that is that governs calculation of oxidation number. I want to warn you, please don't rely on your secondary school knowledge in tackling this. You need to take this serious. Though some may be familiar and they may, you may get exactly the same type of results you normally get, but some will not be the same. And you have to learn and make sure that you understand this very well. So when the rules are, and they are in order, rule one is much more important than rule two. We are sure you have rule one, rule two, rule three, all, all the other ones you have to go into cooler. Rule one supersedes one, two, three, four, five. Is that okay? Um, so rule one, oxygen number of an atom or an uncombined is normally zero. We ask everybody, you have an atom that is not combined with anything, the oxidation number is, is zero. 
take that one, it is very, very important. And the second one, the second rule, is that the sum of oxidation number of all atoms in a molecule, in a molecule, is equal to zero. So when you take all atoms in a molecule, when you add them together, the oxidation number must be equal to zero. On the other hand, when you have an ionic formula, the total of the oxidation number must be equal to the charge on that ionic formula, both in magnitude and sign. It must be equal to the number on that ionic unit, both in magnitude and sign. That is rule two. And I said we want to supersede rule two. But rule two, at the same time, is going to supersede rule three. Our rule three says that the alkaline, alkaline metals, that is group one A metals, and they are lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium, they have oxidation number of plus one. Is that okay? So it's only when you want you to are uh, okay that you can come and apply this. Otherwise, you want a rule two will supersede it. And then um, when you also have the alkaline meta, group 2A, the oxidation number will be plus two. I hope that is taken. That is rule two. You have to follow these rules strictly. You have to follow these rules strictly. And then rule five says that the oxidation number of hydrogen is plus one in its compound, while fluorine is minus one. That is rule four. So oxygen must have oxidation number of plus one and fluorine minus one when we want two and three are not affecting it. Is that okay? That is very important. Now, if now see rule five, oxygen has an oxidation number of minus two in its compound. So that means rule four supersedes rule five. Wherever you have oxygen and hydrogen, you determine the oxidation number of hydrogen first because it must be plus one. Is that okay? Because it must be plus one. It's after that you now determine what that of hydrogen, oxygen will be. And rule six says that in their binary compound, binary compound means where you have only two elements. And here you have only two elements. Um, in their binary compound with metals, the element of group 7A has oxidation number of minus one, 6A has minus two, and 5A has minus three. So these are the rules. The rule seven is just to let you know that the other you need to supersede one another. So these rules you must follow strictly. Irrespective of how the oxidation number looks to you, you need to follow the rule very, very strictly. And that is very, very important. So for instance, if you are to calculate the oxidation number of um, sulfur from sulfur S8, the answer is simply means that it must be zero because all S in eight form will be eight times sulfur. That's equals to zero. And S will now be equals to zero divided by eight, which is equals to zero. And then if you want to calculate that of zinc sulfide, now from the rule you are given, only rule six will be applicable first. There's nothing that talks about zinc in all the rules I gave earlier. So if you look at this, sink absorber is um, belongs to group 6A, and its oxidation number in its binary compound should be minus two. So you don't need to do any calculation, you just rule that rule straight. And um, now if you look at hydrogen sulfide, rule four says hydrogen must be plus one. So if hydrogen is plus one, that means two hydrogen plus sulfur must be equal to zero. That is our rule two. And if that is that, that means two plus sulfur is equal to zero. That means your sulfur is equal to minus two. And then um, if you look at this sodium um, Na2SO3, well, we have rule three that says that sodium must be plus one, 
you will find that it says that oxygen must be minus two. So you just substitute these values in that into that equation, and then you get the value for your sulfur. So in this case, this is sulfur four. I'm sure you are familiar with this. These are common ones. So if you look for this, Na2, if you look for this, Na2S2O3. So three, sodium plus one, rule five, oxygen is minus. You can see that your sulfur in this equation is plus two. You see sulfur having two different um, oxidation number in two different compounds. So you have to take note of that. And if you want to find out, for instance, what is your system number of um, so, uh, hydrogen in this compound? Now you have NaH. But you remember, rule three comes before rule four. Rule four is what says that hydrogen must be plus one. And rule three is what says sodium must be plus one. So you have to apply rule three before you go to rule four. And therefore, Sodium must be plus one, your hydrogen is H, and that is that must be equal to zero, and that means your H is minus one. Is that okay? So hydrogen in sodium hydride is minus one. That may not be very common, but hydrogen is minus one here. But when you come to water, your hydrogen, the rule says, must be plus one you don't need to do any calculation there's nothing that talks about any other one before and the same thing goes for hydrogen peroxide hydrogen must be plus one so if you look at another example you want to calculate that of oxygen in the following in water hydrogen must be plus one and therefore your oxygen is minus two you are familiar with that if you look at hydrogen peroxide your hydrogen must be plus one. If you substitute that into that equation, that means your two oxygen is minus two, and your oxygen in this case, surprisingly, must be minus one. I hope you have seen it. Oxygen is minus one in this case. Now let's go for a funny one. If you look at K2O, potassium, rule three says, must be plus one. If potassium is plus one, your oxygen here yeah, must be minus two. Now look at this D. Potassium must be plus one. If potassium is plus one, that means one plus two oxygen is equal to zero. That means two oxygen is equal to minus one. And this is difficult to believe. Your oxygen here yeah, is minus a fraction fraction so you just have to follow the rules don't think of what you think it should be follow the rule it's like you say follow the master so follow the rule if you don't want to get lost while doing calculations in electrochemistry or solution and reduction as we have here you have to follow the rule so oxygen is minus half air is that okay now if there are formula units or any formula units like what you have here, all you have to simply do is follow the rules. Rule two says that the answer, the total for all the elements, two ruthenium plus chlorine, eight chlorine must be equal to minus two. That is clear. Chlorine will sister you it must be minus one. Is that okay? In its compound. And if that is minus one, your RE will be equal to plus three. I hope that is clear. And when you go for aluminium, um, ALH2O3, all in brackets, six as you have there, the total must be equal to plus three. Your formula unit, your formula unit will be one, H2O is equal to zero. And that means your aluminium must be equal to plus three. And then um, similar thing, your, um, I, your ion, is cyanide. So what you have there is ion plus um, six six uh, Cn will be equal to minus three. You know nitrogen in that formula unit has its own charge, and um, carbon has its own charge, and that um, ion that um, the overall thing there is that carbon is four, nitrogen is minus five. The two of them cannot be negative, 
and that means the overall d is minus one. So ion plus six into bracket minus one. So that means ion minus six will be equal to minus three, and that means the ion you have there is ion three. I hope it is clear. That is ion three. And um, now the next thing is how do you identify with those reactions? With those reactions, how do you identify them when you have them in chemical reactions? And the way you can identify them is by checking the oxidation number of the various elements that are present, both at the product and the reactant size. So if they change, if there's a change, yes, that means there's oxidation reduction. If there is no change, then that means there is no redox reaction. Is that okay? When I say redox reaction, I mean the same thing as oxidation and reduction. So let's check some of this. Um, if we check this reaction, is there a change? Ion in Fe2O3 is what? That ion is ion three. And ion here is what? Is zero. So that means ion has changed from ion three plus to ion is zero. And if you look at carbon, carbon here has changed from carbon two to carbon four. So that means there is redox reaction in this one. If you look at another reaction, look at this. If you look at P in Ca3P2, your P is minus three there. Is that okay? And um, if you look at the first thing you have, 2PH3, your P is also minus three. Look at your calcium. Your calcium is plus two, yeah? in the reactant, and your calcium is also plus two in the product. There's no change in the oxidation number, and therefore, that means there's no redox reaction. So that is not a redox reaction. So not all reactions are redox reaction. So if you look at this P4, going to P4 in oxygen, that means the, it has changed it has changed from zero to plus five. And your oxygen has changed from the zero that you have here to minus two. There's a change. And that means this reaction three is a redox reaction. I hope that is clear. So um, you have to take notes that in any redox reaction, there's at least one oxidation half reaction and one redox reaction. There are instances when you can have two oxidations and one reduction. And there are instances when you can have two reductions and one oxidation half reactions. But normally you must have at least one one for each of them. So now we go to balancing of redox reactions. That is important. Balancing of redox reactions. Okay. Um, yes. I want to take you can unmute yourself when I ask you to unmute. Yes, sir, please. Good morning, Please slow down. 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 Uh, 
Mindful of something. In a case that you have a set of numbers, not like a given time and no means, and you are told to find the mean, you are to. My song would be. That's what my song would be. Well, I gave the opportunity to talk, but it's like um, it has become another thing. So I will probably just have to continue the class. If you are orderly, then I will have been able to take a number of questions from you. But I think I need to let you know that essentially all that you have here are things that you have in that book, Physical Chemistry. I've seen some of you with the book. So just get a copy of that book, then you have the whole of what I will say is my notes. Most of the things you have here are taken from there, except that they are graded somehow. So how to balance um, half reactions? How to balance reduce reactions? So that is um, how to balance reduce equations. So the first step if you want to balance redox equations is to identify the species involved in oxidation in the oxidation number changes and write out the half reaction. That is the first step. If you follow them step by step, you are going to get it. The second step is that you have to balance each of the half reactions atomically. Here yeah, what I said, balance each of the half reactions atomically. That means to balance the number of atoms in each of them. And the first thing you have to do is to balance other atoms other than oxygen and hydrogen. Oxygen and hydrogen are the last ones you balance. Balance all other atoms first atomically. Then after that, balance oxygen. And the way you balance oxygen is by adding H2O. The way you balance oxygen is by adding H2O, and then the way you balance hydrogen is by adding ion um, proton, that is H plus. And then after that, so after that, after you have balanced them atomically, then you have to balance each half reaction electrically. And the way you die, balance electrically is by adding electrons so as to make the number of electrons and the protons you have to be the same. And when you have done that, the next step will be that you obtain a net reaction. Net reaction, that means you add the reactants on the two half reactions together and the, um, the reactants, that be the product on the two half reactions you need to add them together. When you have added them together, the next thing is now you try to simplify by bringing species that are of the same, that are the same to one side so that they only be on one side, you have it on the, you have them on the, on the two sides. And then the last step will be now you verify what you have balanced, both atomically and electrically to be sure that what you have is actually what you ought to have. I hope that is clear. That is how to balance redox reactions. So let's start for these um, two examples. The first one, I'm sure you are familiar with it, but I will still go through it. And the second one is also there for you. So the first one, the two half reactions in this case, will be your MnO4 minus going to Mn2 plus. And your Fe2 plus going to Fe3 plus. These are the two half reactions. Now, when you want to balance the reaction atomically, I said balance other atoms first. The other atom here in this one is manganese. So you have more manganese at the reactants 
no manganese at the product. That one is balanced. So after balancing that, if you look at the steps I've given you, the next thing to balance will be oxygen. And the way you balance oxygen is by adding water molecules. So if you have four oxygens, that means you add four water molecules to the other side of it. And that is what you have in step two there. And now since you have, you have added four water molecules to it, you have to balance hydrogen. Hydrogen now, you have to add eight hydrogen ions to the reactant site so that you now have eight eight. So as you can see that you have eight hydrogen here on the left side, eight hydrogen on the right hand side. So that means that equation is balanced atomically. And then your Fe2 plus is balanced atomically already. So that means we have done with the balancing of the half reactions atomically. So the next thing we have to do now is to balance the half reactions electrically. Uh, electrically, we do it, like I said earlier, by adding electrons. So if you look at the first one, you have eight plus the total, the eight, you have minus one on manganese four, and manganese seven rather, you have minus one there, you have plus one on hydrogen, but you have eight of it. So eight times one, that is eight plus. Minus one from the manganese, that is seven. So the total charge on your left hand side is plus seven. And the total charge on your left hand side is plus two. Now, what do you do to bring them together? Electron is negative. So if you are going to add electrons, you have to add it to the higher side. The higher side between plus seven and plus two is plus seven. So how many negative, how many do you have to add? How many electrons do you have to add to make plus seven to be plus two? That is the question. And in that case, you have to add five electrons. So if you add five electrons to each of the sides, then it will be balanced electrically. So now that it is balanced electrically, we balance the second equation to electrically. You have Fe2 plus on one side, Fe3 plus on the other side. So you have plus two, plus three. We have to add electron two to the higher side. You only need to add one. That is why we have added one. So if you look at it now, the two half reactions are balanced electrically. And now that they are balanced electrically, the next thing for us to do is to add the two of them together. But you see, we cannot add them together except the number of electrons are equal. We cannot add them together unless the number of electrons are equal. Can you hear me again? If they are not equal, don't add, don't add them together. The only reason why you can add them together will be using another formula, which you are going to be taught much later. But if you add them ordinarily, you can add them together unless the number of electrons are equal. Is that okay? That is very, very important. Now, to make the number of electrons equal, you have to multiply the Fe2 plus, that is um, oxidation of reaction, by five. And that gives you five Fe2 plus, plus five Fe3 plus, plus five electrons. Now that they have the same number of electrons, then you can add them together. So if you add them together now, you have this equation. And then from there, you can delete, you can remove five electrons from the two sides, and this is your balanced redox reaction. This is your balanced redox reaction. Yes. I hope this is clear. I don't want to waste time because the last time I opened the floor for you to ask questions, it was rowdy and then it was just like we wasted our time. Um, probably I will create opportunity for a chat on the LMS later and probably we'll try and see how we treat the questions. So now we take the second equation, which we have there. You have SO3, yeah? 
and then you have the reactants. So the first thing you do is how do we so how do we balance this? So just like you said earlier, take the first equation. Sulfur, sulfur, one, one. So atomically, that is balanced. For oxygen, they are not balanced because there are three oxygen on one side, four oxygen on the other side. Now the next thing you do is we look at what do we do to balance this. So that means you need to add um, oxygen water molecule to one side to make it to be balanced. And that means to where you have three oxygens so that you have four oxygen at that side as well. And if you do that, so if you do that, okay, if you do that, we have this and you have this. After we have added this, you now discover that we have two oxygen, a bit two hydrogen atoms here. Which are not here. In that case, you have to add two hydrogens to this side as well. So when you look at this equation now, it is atomically balanced. And then we can now go ahead with the other one to balance atomically. Your manganese one, manganese here, yeah, one, one. That's okay. But here you have four oxygen atoms. That means you have to add four molecules of water to this side, which is what we have added there. But by the time we introduce four water molecules here, we have eight hydrogen um, ions here. And that means you have you have to add eight F. This is actually similar to what we have from here. So now you balance electrically. Um, here you have minus two on the on the left hand side, and is there is zero here. So you have minus two there, and then you have zero there. So if you have um, this, that means you have to add electrons to the higher side. Now the question is, which one is the higher side? Minus two. Or where you have is zero, which is higher. You see minus two that is higher or is zero. I know this is where confusion will normally come in. in when you have energy, when somebody is in debt of two naira and somebody doesn't have money, who is richer? Who is richer among the two of them? The one that doesn't have a debt. So if you have to add electron, you have to add electrons to the zero side. Is that okay? And that is what you do here. And that's why we have added, that's why we have added zero, and we have added two electrons to that side. So now you go on, you know this other one we have balanced before. So we just balance, bring, bring down the um, equation we have done before. Now the only difference now is that, you know the number of electrons have to be the same. You have two electrons in one, five electrons in the other one. And the way to solve this problem is that where you have two electrons, you multiply by five. Where you have five electrons, you multiply by two. So when you multiply these equations as we have here, then your balance equation is going to be what you just have. But if you look at that, you have water molecules on the two sides. You have proton on the two sides. You have to take them to the same side. So it's like collecting light times. So you take five more molecules from both sides, that will become three. You take 10 protons from both sides, that will become six, and then your electrons will be off. And this is your balanced equation. This is your balanced equation. So sometimes we may have to, have to balance our reactions in basic medium. You see, we are, when you talk about H plus, that means we are talking about um, we are talking about um, acid media. Is that okay? But when you have reaction in basic medium, that means your reaction is inside OH. So the way this is done is that you do it the same way. We have, this is the easiest. There are many methods you can use. 
But the easiest one that I want you to use is the one I'm telling you now. Balance that reaction like what we have done before in acidic medium. When you have balanced the reaction in acidic medium, what you do at the end is to add OH minus to the two sides that will nullify the number of um, H plus you have. And that you simplify, then you have your reaction in basic medium. So if you look at this, for instance, you just go ahead and balance it. Um, these are the two half reactions. Atomically, chromium in one in one place, in one in the other place. We have four oxygen in one place, so we have to add four molecules of water. After adding four molecules of water, that means you have eight, eight, eight plus. So we have to add eight, eight plus to this side. So that is atomically balanced. For the other one, the aldehyde are the same. Then oxygen, you have to add three oxygen to one side. I'll be killing water molecules to one side to balance the oxygen. And after doing that, you need to add six hydrogen plus to the other side. So that is also balanced atomically. And then the next thing is to balance them electrically. So if you want to balance them electrically, look at the next charge. This one is plus three here. And the other one, you have to add three electrons to make it balance electrically. And then... Um, if you do that, then you do that for the outdate as well. You have five on one side, minus one on the other side. And that means you have to add six electrons. Now that's, that's a problem. You are having five on one side, plus five, minus one. If you want to make plus five to be minus one, how many electrons are you going to add? It has to be six. Take note, it has to be six. So when you add that six, Electrons, then you have this. So this is balanced atomically. So this is like the balancing we did earlier. Now, you see what you have here is 10 H. This is balanced now, but you have 10 H plus on the reactants. So if you want to make it to be in basic media now, in the basic medium now, what you do is that you have to add 10 hydrogen plus to the two sides. So you have the 10 hydroxyl ion, right? 10 OH minus to the two sides. So if you add 10 OH minus to both sides, this one will become 10 molecules of water, and then you have 10 OH minus on this side. And when you balance that, you remove five molecules of water, you have five molecules of water from there, that means you have five left here, and then you have this equation, and that is your balance equation that is your balanced equation in acidic medium. So I think we are going to stop here today and we we'll continue from here next lesson. Um, you know, what you can do in this type of situation that you cannot see us one-on-one -on -one is that people that are close by you try to discuss and um, listen together, follow the notes. The notes are quite explicit and the PowerPoint two are quite explicit. So I see you on Wednesday by God's grace. You have a nice day. Bye.